After login, the first thing we see is the dashboard. The dashboard, you can find the link on the left here, is a configurable start page of Palladian and shows whoever logs in the information that they have selected and wish to see. This is customizable on a per user basis and Elena decided to have this setup of information here. It's freely arrangeable so you can decide where you want to put each type of information. This flexibility allows you to learn what you need to know about your network very quickly. To go through it from an operations point of view, we could first look at the request distribution. It shows a combined counter of different request types that are processed on the network. This graph is currently showing a normal distribution, so we can move on. As a next step, we could look at the number of active calls in all networks we are monitoring at this time. Usually the value in the afternoon is about 50 to 70, so we can see that this graph is normal. It's slightly decreasing, but everything looks like it's in good shape here. In the active user devices, the number is also normal. From these three graphs, we can quickly understand if something is going wrong. For example, if there are fewer users registered, we would see this, the active user devices, is dropping. We would also be able to see if there are fewer calls than usual. If there are more calls than usual for that time, this could also be a hint that something is going wrong on the network. Right now, everything looks all right on these counters, so we can proceed to more complex questions. Consider a scenario where recently a session border control device was having problems with the transit times. It was not relaying calls that are passing on the one side and sending it over to the second side in time. It was due to an overload situation and an insufficient hardware configuration. It was solved by the operations team, but to make sure that in the future this kind of problem is seen early, Elena decided to put a specialized widget on the dashboard that shows her the transit time of the session border controller. So we can see that this session border controller is processing the messages with less than one millisecond delay, which is an excellent value, so we don't need to worry. Again, we would have immediately seen if this was greater than usual, allowing us to anticipate an upcoming problem. When we look here on the left side again, we see the recent calls on the platform. You can select if you wish to have this as a static view or to view it in real time. When we update it, we see that new calls drop in as they arrive. They can be even in a proceeding or ringing stage and you can start analyzing a call in the very millisecond it has been initiated. So we can see there are established calls and that new calls are coming in. Setup times are consistently good. No reason to worry on that side. So very quickly we see that everything is in a green area. Looking further down, we see a pie chart showing connected PBX trunks. We have 771 users and 771 trunks that have PBXs connected. That can either be a normal value or not. In this case, it indicates normal behavior. So once again, we get a good feeling for our connected enterprise systems. Further down, we look at the media quality information and the recent calls all had very good audio quality. There are some jitter times that have been configured, shown here in orange and red, even if they are only slightly above the normal because usually we have very good network connections. That can be an indication of upcoming problems, even though it's not really a problem yet. We see that the current MOS scores are all over four, so there is no indication of degradation in audio quality. We can look at the recent registration, and we can see that recent registrations are processed, and that recently many of them have been rejected due to invalid credentials that are configured in the end device. This is also a normal situation and does not need to be investigated further. The final charts we have here are pie charts showing certain Linksys and Cisco devices, which might indicate firmware versions that have a problem. The charts give us an instantaneous understanding of what types of devices are out there and how they are distributed. They also give a good quick overview of what's going on in the network. As a result, we see no further indication from this dashboard that anything is going wrong on the network. We can now move on to a more thorough exploration of the system.